mess with. I think I'm getting messed with by triggers. Yeah, me too. Oh, I'm on. Whoa. That ain't no trigger. I think you got a nibble. Oh, we set the hook. See, that was weird. Where your GoPro going? It's going. My jigging rod is still out. Oh. Woo! Damn, that's, that's a, a pissed off. Like 220, 230. That could be a that could be a blackfin. Come on, do your thing, Victor. Nice. That's what Jameson was doing. See yeah, that? you just reel it in. He just does that. Uh oh, but then it got stuck. Oh, careful! The braid almost hit your line, dude. Hey. My little rubber band weighted trick worked this time. Yeah. I just, Jason, it's a king. Really? Yeah. Or a cope. Yeah, it's a nice king, dude. It's a nice king. All right, let me know what you want me to do. I got to go. Loosening up on him. Damn. Meat. Meat, boys. Meatball. <laughs> oh, a nice king. Was that a cope? No, it's a king. Oh, it's a king. Yes. Damn, see that was a great gap shot. Even yeah, that's a bloodline shot in the cooler. Jason, yeah. <laughs> what up guys, Victor here, and today I got a special treat for you guys. I got another catch and cook coming from you. The last one was a little bit of a fail because I had some audio issues. But check out this Smoker King right here. Check out those gnarly teeth. If you guys aren't familiar, this is a king mackerel, otherwise known as a kingfish we have down here in Florida. And he's got some nasty chompers on him. But it's springtime, it's Florida, we got plenty of kingfish around, and kingfish is a fish that a lot of people are afraid to eat because you probably don't know how to cook it. But don't be afraid to eat it. I'm gonna show you a badass recipe for this guy right here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cook up this big one right here. I'm gonna put him back in the cooler because we don't need that much meat. And we're gonna do this guy right here. So this is a nice right around six to eight pound king and I'm gonna stake them up for you and you're gonna see exactly how it's done. All right, we're rolling. So the way I'm gonna prepare this kingfish is actually staked style and I'm gonna leave the skin on. Fish skin is not that bad. I, I mean, I think it adds a lot of flavor to the fish and it gets nice and crispy and it adds another layer of flavor to the fish. So what I'm gonna do is, first I'm gonna scale my kingfish and then I'm gonna stake them up and then later you're gonna see me throw it on the grill, but let's get to that first. All right, now my mackerel is all nicely scaled and they don't really have defined scales. It's just these little really tiny things and it's just a bunch of slimes, slime. So I'm just knocking that stuff off. I'm gonna rinse them off, move the camera so it doesn't get wet and then we're gonna get to staking it. Now another thing that I'm gonna do is gut this king. So I'm gonna start right over here by the gills and just come work my way down to his anal fin. And I'm just gonna rip all this stuff off because when I go to make my steaks I don't really want it touching my meat to be honest with you so I'm just gonna cut all his intestines and guts off and I don't mind this I actually love playing with fish guts if you don't I don't know what to tell you real fishermen love to play with fish guts I love getting my hands dirty and love getting bloody all right now that we are all gutted up I'm just gonna take my knife and so to stake it I'm probably gonna do one inch steaks. So when I'm saying one inch, I mean one inch running horizontally this way or uh, parallel to the length of the fish's body. So I'm gonna start right here behind the head and I'm going all the way through the bone, just like that. So the head's off, I'm gonna set that aside. So like I said, about one inch steaks, just like that. And steaks are something that you know, it's, it's a very easy thing to prepare. You don't have to go through the hassle of filleting the fish, skinning the fish. So now this is what it looks like. So I have a kingfish steak, and this is the skin, and I'm running my hand across it. There's no scales on it. There's no slime. I knocked it all off with my knife, and if you just saw, I'm just rubbing it back and forth, and I got a nice one-inch steak. I forgot to mention, so the kingfish, you want to cut around this belly area right here because this meat is not the most flavorful. So if you go from the top of your steak, or that's the top or the dorsal part of the fish down here, I just run right alongside and I try to get this, you know, bloody area and that belly area really out of the fish. So I'll just go ahead and do that. All right guys, welcome back to the kitchen for this catch and cook with the king mackerel that I'm about to whip up. 
But first things first, I'm gonna make a nice balsamic glaze. All right, so I did about two cups of balsamic vinegar and I'm gonna do a half a cup of brown sugar for my glaze. And it's gonna go right into my balsamic vinegar, medium high heat, because I'm gonna bring it to a boil. And then once it's to a boil, there's the mixture right there. Once it's to a boil, I'm gonna reduce it and let it simmer. And it's boiling up now. So I'm gonna reduce it probably to medium low heat. I'm just gonna let that sit there until it's a nice syrupy goop and you guys are gonna see that. So I got some shots right here and while that mixture is going and boiling, I'm gonna dice these guys up and I'm gonna caramelize them and that is gonna go right on top of the kingfish and it is gonna be really good. All right, so shallots are really cool because they're like these little tiny mini baby sweet onions and they have a nice little just sweet kick to them. They're a lot more subtle than an onion. They're not so sharp, they're a lot sweeter and that's what I'm gonna be using and this is gonna be caramelized, so I'm gonna just go ahead and chop them up. So I cut them into these little rings, and now I'm just gonna take those rings and just cut them right down the middle, because when I caramelize something, when you caramelize it, it's gonna shrink a lot, because I'm gonna cook it for a long time until it's a nice golden brown color and it releases all its sugars. And you don't wanna cut your pieces too small, because then you're not gonna be able to caramelize it properly, because it does take a while to cook. So I got them into these nice little half circles. That's the perfect size, that's what you want. Now we got another saucepan. I'm gonna put some butter and olive oil on here and get the shallots going, start to caramelize them. Butter, put that in there. I got it on medium heat. Our oil and butter is hot enough, or not that hot, but it'll heat up. So I'm gonna put my shallots in there. And this is important, so I put the, I got a little shell in there. I gotta put the two things that are gonna cook the longest in there first, which is my shallots and my um, balsamic glaze. So I got that going, I'm gonna let this go. These are both probably gonna go about for 30 minutes. And while that's going, I should probably fill you guys in on what I'm actually making. So we're gonna do this all balsamic glaze on top of the kingfish that I'm gonna put on the grill with some caramelized shallots. That's gonna go on there, but we're also making some bruschetta, which is one of my favorite side dishes. Got some fresh basil, a nice baguette, some nice plump red tomatoes that are in the fridge. We got these bad boys right here, some really beautiful tomatoes, and you don't wanna skimp out on good tomatoes when you're making bruschetta because it is one of the, I mean, it's the tastiest ingredient, I think, in bruschetta. You, know, you want nice, red, juicy tomatoes. You don't wanna get cheap tomatoes when it comes to bruschetta. Another thing that I'm gonna do with this recipe is is I'm actually gonna put, so we're gonna put the glaze and the onions on top of the kingfish, on top of the grilled kingfish, but we're doing a little twist too. We're gonna put some of the bruschetta toppings on top of the kingfish, as well as the bruschetta toppings on top of the bread. So we're gonna have a little mix and match right there, and you guys are gonna see it's gonna come out really good. So the onions are starting to sizzle up, and to caramelize them, I'm gonna let these guys go for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna pour a little bit of sugar and salt on them as well. This is boiling, and it's already starting to get a little bit thick. So when I'm making this glaze, all that water is boiling out of there, and you're gonna get a nice syrupy substance. So while this is going, I'm gonna go and head, get ahead and start on cutting up my tomatoes for the bruschetta. I'm gonna cut this last guy up and then I'm gonna check on my uh, balsamic glaze and my onions, see how they're doing. And then I'm gonna start cutting up the rest of the ingredients for the bruschetta. Check on our onions. So our onions are nice and brown and caramelized and that's exactly what you want them to look like. So basically, those are done. I'm just gonna reduce the heat to real, real low and just keep them warm. And this guy is still going. He's still getting nice and syrupy. And I'm also gonna reduce the heat on this guy to low because this is pretty much the consistency I want it. The only thing left is I just wanna keep it warm. All right, so my family is no stranger to garlic and they are not afraid of garlic. So I'm gonna use a half of a head of garlic just like this and I'm gonna dice it up real fine because it is gonna be mixed with my tomatoes on that bruschetta so I don't want giant clumps because you are gonna be eating it raw. Okay, on to chopping our garlic. And I don't know why I always do this, but I saw it on a cooking show once, and before I go ahead and chop my garlic, I like to put a little bit of salt on it, get the garlic nice and salty, and then I take my knife just like this, and I literally just squish the garlic 
before I go to mince it. That way it's already a little bit smaller and easier to cut up for me. And like I said, nice and finely minced because you are going to be eating this raw and a lot of people don't like really big bumps of garlic. We got our tomatoes right here and I'm just going to take the garlic, pour it right on top. I'm going to give it a good mix and then the only thing that's left that's going to go into our bruschetta mix is going to be some fresh basil. Okay, and I love a lot of basil, so I got about a handful of leaves here, probably like 12 to 15 leaves. I'm going to clump them up just like this. So I'll go and I'll just start slicing and then I'll just repeat that a couple of times because I also want my basil nice and fine so it's uniformly distributed around my tomatoes and garlic. Straight into our tomato and garlic we go. So now we got a spoon, I'm just gonna stir it all up, try to make it nice and even. You want a nice baguette or French bread, um, you know, a nice, a nice soft bread because I'm gonna slice this up uh, th along this way and I'm gonna throw it on the grill. And I'm gonna season my bread a little bit with some garlic powder to start off with. Not a lot, a very little bit of paprika. We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on each one of these breads. I just took the kingfish out of the fridge and these are the steaks and I'm gonna tell you, I'll be honest with you, you go ahead and smell them. These have been in the fridge for two and a half days and it does not smell fishy at all. So I'm just gonna rinse it off real quick just to make sure there's no blood or anything left. I'm just gonna rinse them off and I'm gonna have some paper towels right here on my cutting board. Have a paper towel laid down and make sure to pat all the water off. As far as seasoning those fillets, I want that balsamic glaze and those onions to really do the trick. So I'm not going to season them that much. I'm just going to do garlic powder, paprika, salt, pepper, and olive oil. First, I'm going to rub them down with some olive oil and then put all that on top. I want to put that bread on first, get it nice and toasty, and uh, get it a little crispy. I'm going to show you guys the very last ingredient you need for your bruschetta, and that is gorgonzola cheese. You can use two types of cheese. You can use gorgonzola or you can use feta. I like gorgonzola. It is definitely a stronger, smellier cheese, but I think it's the traditional way to make bruschetta or bruschetta, however you guys pronounce it. You guys can correct me in the comment section below, but definitely gorgonzola cheese. If you have someone who is not that cheesy of a person, I would go ahead and use feta. And we just gotta add a little bit more love to our bruschetta, so I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit more olive oil on this. All right guys, here we go. So the kingfish sticks are going on the grill with the seasoned side down first. That way I can put the olive oil on top later. And I don't, honestly don't think I would like fish as much as I do if I couldn't cook my own catch. Cause there's just something, it's, it's hard to explain. There's just something about cooking something that you killed and you know you did it humanely and you know you, you, know you did it because you love it. And to be able to cook it and to, it, it kind of makes you feel like a badass. Like, you know, that you could survive on your own by catching something in the wild, bringing it home and cooking it and not have to go to the grocery store, which is pretty cool. All right, so it's cooked probably three to four minutes on the first side. Now, I gotta take my spatula and very carefully, you gotta take it because some of the meat will fall off. So I gotta do it real slowly. And that's why I said keep that skin on because it's gonna help keep the meat all together. We put a little bit of caramelized onion on the fish. I'm gonna take the balsamic glaze, just a spoonful right here, and just drizzle it on top, just like that. Make your plate look nice too. You can do a little bit of this. And the last thing we have is I'm gonna have some bruschetta topping on top of my fish as well. So it's like an open-faced bruschetta fish steak, just like that. I want you guys to meet some. This is my grandma. She's the one I get all my cooking skills from, but, and she hates fish. She thinks all fish are fishy, and tell me what you think about the kingfish. It's very good. It's good? Not fishy. Not fishy. And that's coming from someone who does not like fish, so don't throw your kingfish away, guys. Kingfish is good. So we're gonna go ahead and have a nice little family lunch, and I'll see you guys in that next video. So if you guys like these Catch and Cooks, please make sure to comment, subscribe, and like the damn video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. But one thing I forgot to say guys is when you are eating kingfish steaks like this, be very careful because you will have bones in it for sure. 
So just make sure to eat around the bones. Just a little safety tip so you guys don't choke on those bones. 